Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a surgeon question and answer session all about mitral valve clinical trials. We're joined by Dr. Pavan Atlery, who is the Director of Minimally Invasive and Robotic Cardiac Surgery at Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During his fantastic career, Dr. Atlery has performed over 5,000 cardiac procedures with more than 2,000 involving some form of valve repair or valve replacement. Dr. Atlery, are you there? Hi, Adam. Yes, uh, thank you for that very warm introduction. Yeah, Dr. Adler, I can't thank you enough for being on the call with us today. And we're gonna talk all about the innovations of mitral valve therapy and clinical trials. But first, I've got a question uh, all about you. Why did you wanna become a cardiac surgeon? I'll tell you, Adam, it was uh, a love that I found very early in medical school. I was introduced to cardiac surgeons roughly one month in, and I was absolutely captivated by the impact that they were able to make, the technical skill that it took, and um, the very impressive physiology. And ever since then, I've spent really the last nearly two and a half decades studying the heart, researching the heart, and more significantly focused on valvular heart disease. There's so many things out there available to cardiac surgeons to focus on, but you said, hey, you know what? I really want to focus on valve disease. What? was it that attracted you to valvular therapies? You know, what I really love about valvular therapies is that it involves um, young people, just like you and I, uh, who are healthy and otherwise have a very normal uh, life expectancy, normal outlook. The ability to provide them with normalization of quality of life, with really a uh, lifestyle with no limitations, as well as normal survival compared to someone who might not have the same valve dysfunction, I think is highly appealing. Um, I love working with my patients. I love um, interacting with them and I love seeing the benefits that I'm able to provide them. So I find that all highly gratifying and it makes my day just worth going to work. And Dr. Atlery, by you going to work, patients are getting some incredible surgical outcomes there at Penn Medicine. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, specific to clinical trials, what made you want to become so involved in that type of research? We're always trying to innovate, trying to improve outcomes. And part of my passion for minimally invasive surgery is to allow patients to have full repair of any valvular abnormalities, abnormalities that they might have. Um, but doing it through less invasive approaches, which allows them to recover quicker and get back to life. Um, the old days, the early days of cardiac surgery, where we would spend three to four months rehabbing and getting back to life, I think is, it's a lot to ask someone to go through. Being able to do that through minimally invasive means and now potentially percutaneous means um, is very attractive. Dr. Atlery, there are four valves in the heart, the aortic, the mitral, the tricuspid, and the pulmonary. I'm curious to know, is there any one specific valve that is getting more clinical trial attention now than in the past? Great question, Adam. I think for the past decade, our focus has really been on the aortic valve. And many patients, many uh, members of the public likely heard about the TAVR therapy, uh, which is transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And we've seen a very nice progression from clinical trials to now FDA-approved therapy, really for all classes of patients, high risk, intermediate risk, and now even low risk patients. We are, of course, trying to sort out what is the best therapy in the low risk population. A lot of it has to do with what is the most durable therapy that will provide patients with the longest survival. More recently, we are uh, focused on the mitral valve. And in recent, really, years and months, we're seeing a lot of focus on the part of not only private investigators, but also large corporations who are focused on developing therapies for both mitral valve repair and replacement. Dr. Allery, given all this interest in mitral valve clinical trials, can you highlight some of the repair trials that you're working on? There's a couple of sort of key trials that are happening. One is has to do with 
the clip type of therapy, so mitra clip that maybe uh, more and more patients are hearing about. Um, this therapy has been approved actually for um, repair for patients with what we would call functional mitral regurgitation. It's recently re it's received approval for even degenerative therapies, but really for high risk patients. And now we're starting to even talk about trials for patients that are maybe at lesser risk, so the intermediate risk population, to see if a, this CLIP therapy, which is basically a therapy that is delivered from the groin vessels into the heart, and it brings together the abnormal part of the mitral valve and supports it with a more normal part of the mitral valve and hopefully restores competence of the valve. So that's been very exciting, and two different devices are being utilized on that end. There's a few other devices that are being conceptually developed and will hopefully make it to mainstream clinical trials, utilizing various techniques that potentially could mimic some of the techniques that we utilize in surgery, like utilizing an annuloplasty band to bring together leaflets and mitral valves, um, there's also a trial that we are actually a part of that we are about to start um, where we actually utilize cords that are placed by a very small incision in the left chest through the tip of the heart known as the apex. And we capture these abnormal or diseased parts of the mitral valve leaflet and bring them back into normal conformation. Um, so really lots of really exciting technology that's out there. The mitral valve is a very complex valve uh, on all three dimensions. So unfortunately, technological developments have been slower and the bar of course is very high as many patients are uh, much younger uh, and really a healthy group of patients. We wanna make sure that we provide them the perfect results without compromising survival with any experimental therapy that we try. So the bar is extremely, extremely high. Let's shift gears, Dr. Atlery. Can you talk about the clinical trials for mitral valve replacement? When the valve is too diseased, where we don't feel that it's either um, capable of repair or where our repair may not provide optimal long-term durability, we talk about replacing that valve. Uh, there's, there's a few trials out there that are being tried still in very, very early stages. So trials are still, they remain for very high risk patients. And um, for patients in that category, surgery is not an option. So we're starting to see some very early data and very promising data on these replacement therapies. Of course, the mitral valve is a very complex valve. And so the way to see the experimental valve in a patient's Native valve has been a challenge, but the therapies have actually provided some very promising results. A few of the therapies have been delivered directly through a, a, a vascular puncture in the groin. A few have involved small incisions in the chest to access the heart. Um, so more to come on that category. And I think we're still in the very much the first generation of these devices. And as we continue to see technology evolve. I think the therapy will be remarkable. Uh, but I think for low risk patients, we're probably still a decade or more away from really true mainstream therapy. Dr. Atler, I can assure you, we are going to stay tuned to the developments for mitral valve uh, replacement using transcatheter techniques. And thanks for the work that you and your team there at Ped Medicine are doing to advance those therapies. I've got to ask you, patients are often unaware and I would say even confused by this idea of clinical trials. What maybe do you share with patients that might get them interested in participating and enrolling in clinical trials? I will assure you whenever we evaluate clinical trials, and I'm asked to think of clinical trials probably on a weekly basis, and I will tell you the vast majority of them we actually will turn down. Any trial that we uh, decide to participate in is a trial where we think that the therapy is equally as effective as therapies that we have to offer for that class of patients that the trial is designed for. Um, so the, really the first level of screening is on the clinician end. Next is when we sit down with patients and we 
will talk to him ad nauseum. And really, the key is any patient's considering a clinical trial, ask each and every question that they have. You do not want any questions left behind. And you really want to understand, does this team that is offering this therapy for me really believe in that therapy and really believe that it's got equal efficacy or equal effectiveness as traditional therapy? And I, I will assure you that at Penn, we are extremely focused only on making sure that if we offer a therapy for a patient, it would be a therapy that we would want for ourselves really in the same place. Dr. Adler, on behalf of all the patients out there, I want to thank you and your team at Penn Medicine for the really great work that you're doing there in clinical trials, taking the time away from your busy practice to share those insights with us. And just want to say thank you for being with us today, Dr. Atlery. Thank you, Adam. This has been a pleasure, and I look forward to talking to you and really any patients that would be interested in gaining more information or insight on valvular disease. Great. Thanks so much, Dr. Atlery. Take care and keep on ticking. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.